this band TikTok thing is deeper than that. What politicians have done is that they have used the fact that there are several million people out there that do not like TikTok. They have used that fact to make TikTok the face of this bill, the Restrict Act. And they are betting on the fact that many Americans don't read the bills that come up in Congress. So they knew, these politicians knew that they were going to have this hearing with the CEO of TikTok and they very cleverly mixed the two together and made the banning of TikTok the face of the Restrict Act, which they knew you wouldn't read. They knew you wouldn't read the bill and you would go for it because you would think it would be banning TikTok when it actually isn't. Now, y'all know I don't support Fox Entertainment News. Y'all know I don't support white supremacist, racist Tucker Carlson. But when people are speaking truth, I share it. And Tucker Carlson has picked up on the truth of this bill and he did a segment on it. Here's what he said. And meanwhile, just put his tech reporter on the air to inform you that criticizing TikTok opens up Chinese Americans to, quote, hate and violence. If you criticize TikTok, you're killing Asian people. So confronted with all this, you might support efforts in the Congress right now to ban TikTok altogether. And a lot of people do, not just on the right, but also on the left, which is kind of interesting. This is one of those weird moments where there's or appears to be some kind of bipartisan consensus. And that alone might want to make you pause for a second. If everyone in power is saying the same thing, is it really a good idea? Let's take a closer look. And again, this is not a defense of TikTok, merely an acknowledgement of what's actually happening in Washington right now. So one of the bills that would ban TikTok is being pushed, as we said, by senators in both parties. It's called the Restrict Act. Mark Warner of Virginia and John Thune of South Dakota, Democrat and Republican, introduced this legislation. Now, the bill is ostensibly about protecting American national security and ending, quote, foreign adversaries from interfering in our election through apps like TikTok. Because, of course, election interference by Twitter and Facebook is no problem at all. But election interference from TikTok is totally unacceptable. Okay. But in reality, and you should know this if you're opposed to TikTok, as we are, this bill isn't really about banning TikTok. It's never about what they say it is. Instead, this bill would give enormous and terrifying new powers to the federal government to punish American citizens and regulate how they communicate with one another. For example, the bill would regulate, quote, certain transactions between persons in the United States and foreign adversaries. Now, what's a foreign adversary and who gets to decide? Oh, well, the Secretary of Commerce and the, Depart and the DNI, not the Congress, get to decide what foreign adversaries are. Well, that ought to trip a switch in your brain. And then the transactions with foreign adversaries would include, quote, any acquisition, importation, transfer, installation, dealing in, or use of any information and communications technology product or service including ongoing activities such as mandated services, data transmission, software updates, repairs, or the provision of data hosting services. Well, that's pretty broad. Under this bill, if you engage in any of that with a so-called foreign adversary, as determined by, in this case, the Biden administration, that would allow the Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, and the Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, to decide whether you're acting in the, quote, interest of a foreign adversary. Again, that's another term that the executive branch, the Secretary of Commerce, gets to define without the interference of Congress. So if the Biden administration decides that you're doing this, then the Secretary of Commerce can then enforce, quote, any mitigation measure to address any risk arising from any covered transaction with any person or with respect to any property subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Oh, oh, oh. 
These covered transactions can involve, quote, current, past, or potential future transactions. And the mitigation measures include, but are not limited to, throwing American citizens in prison for 20 years. Think about that for a minute. So you would be allowing the executive branch, the Biden administration, to regulate speech on the Internet. And if you are somehow involved with a, quote, foreign adversary, or let's say you oppose the war against Russia, you go to prison for 20 years. So this isn't about banning TikTok. This is about introducing flat out totalitarianism into our system. Now, just because TikTok is so unappealing, just because it's a creepy, low IQ Chinese plot designed to make your kids trans, and it is, it, that does not mean that the people trying to ban TikTok have your interests in mind. Oh, it definitely doesn't, or America's. Keep in mind, these are exactly the same people who drained our strategic petroleum reserve and, in fact, promote China at every turn. Now they're telling you they're against China. They're not. This is not an effort to push back against China. It's part of a strategy to make America much more like China with the government in charge of what you read and see and with terrifying punitive powers at their fingertips. Now we've seen this before from the national security state again and again. Confronted with a foreign adversary, for example, after 9-11, the federal government uses the opportunity to expand their police powers over the American population. And they do it under false pretexts, and they do it quickly by whipping people into a panic. Usually that's rooted in some truth. TikTok is bad, sure. Al-Qaeda was terrible, of course. But these measures are not aimed at stopping the foreign threat. They're aimed at controlling the American population. And they rush it through. And they do it so quickly that no one ever explains how exactly this has preserved American national security. Now, according to Sandy Cortez, we really quote her, Congress has not even been briefed on any of this. Watch. Usually when the United States is proposing a very major move that has something to do with significant risk to national security, one of the first things that happens is that Congress receives a classified briefing. And I can tell you that Congress has not received a classified briefing around the allegations of national security risks regarding TikTok. So why would we be proposing a ban regarding such a significant issue without being clued in on this at all? It just doesn't feel right. Okay, so again, in case you think we've gone crazy and we're defending Sandy Cortez, we should point out that she is a, a tool of the national security state. She's out promoting a war against Russia, and anyone who asks questions is an ally of Putin. And she's probably acting for motives that we find, well, abhorrent. But the question that she raises is real, and we want to be honest enough to say that. This may be one of those times, and they're common in Washington, where the solution has nothing to do with the problem and in fact degrades our free country and makes it something unrecognizable. Glenn Green. From that point, Tucker Carlson brings on a guest that basically regurgitates everything that he just presented. I've just been skimming through the bill. I haven't sat and read the entire bill, but just skimming through for everybody that's thinking that they could just get a VPN and work around this no, baby, that is included in this bill. And if you are caught, you will serve penalties for that. Penalties include $250,000 all the way up to a million dollars. That and any assets or property, anything of value that you have, they will seize it. And last but not least, if you are found guilty of violating this act, you could serve up to 20 years in prison. This has nothing to do with TikTok and everything to do with them trying to control how we communicate with each other. They are just using the dislike of TikTok as the face of this bill. the more you know.